Okay, so one of the things that uh, I thought we would talk about is uh, heating for your house. We're going into Grand Solar Minimum, but a lot of this stuff I did before, maybe I even knew about Grand Solar Minimum, but it's uh, more of just, I like to do things, as many things by myself, under my control, control my costs. And one of the things I did is I took this uh, fireplace. This was a large, grand fireplace. You can see it goes all the way, nice rock on the front. And it was a huge fireplace, but when we ran the fireplace, it really did not provide any heat because it uh, went all the way up straight out the chimney. And uh, so I researched and I found that uh, because this is a, they call it kind of like a bolt-on fireplace on the outside of the house, um, you, you had to get a non-catalytic, and this is a Buck 81 stove, Buck model number 81. And... Uh, it's got a blower in it, and it's it's meant for fairly large size houses. So this, um, we put this in and uh, ran it for several weeks, and we noticed that we were still having trouble heating this house, and it's mainly because we just didn't have adequate insulation. So there'll be another episode that I'll talk about the insulation, but that problem is solved now, and this thing heats the house wonderfully. Oh, I got Buddy uh, trying to break into the shot here. This is my 13 and a half year old lab. Still doing good though. In the background, you hear the chomping. That's my other lab, and that's Dougie, and he's working on a brand new uh, nylon bone that I gave him. But anyways, let's get back to here. So there's some key things that you need when you have a wood stove, besides wood, and I'll show you what I've got out there. You need one of these insulated ash pans. So it's got an insulated bottom on there, and then uh, I just cleaned out the wood stove, and this is several days worth of ash here. Um, so this is going to go outside. As soon as you pull it out and there's hot coals, you need to get it outside because it's emitting carbon dioxide. You need to have these uh, tools over here on the side. And I have to admit, I primarily only use this, uh, I don't know what you call it. I call it like a dust pan. That's pretty much the only thing. I use that for spreading the coals around and everything else. But there's a hook, there's tongs. I use that little broom sometimes for like sweeping up the mess in the front of the fireplace. And then uh, I also got a bellows, and this is great for uh, when you have some coals in there and you throw some wood in, uh, you can kind of get the fire going really quick. I keep some newspapers. Yeah, I got my Christmas lights here because we were testing some lights and just left them there, but I've got a couple things where we catch, you know, some of the older newspapers and I keep them there. I also uh, have this uh, fat wood. This is wonderful stuff. This is actually like pine, but it's full of sap, and it burns for quite a long time. So I usually put that in the middle of the paper roll. When I light that up, that'll actually, uh, you know, get the, get the wood going good as well. And then you got a vacuum cleaner. Now the vacuum cleaner is really important because when you look at this uh, wood stove, the air actually comes up from underneath here, and then it uh, flows from here up here. I don't know if you could see that from in this area out to there. And what will happen is, as you're running a fire for any length of time, sometimes this ash will fall down in this hole and it'll block your airflow. You've got, this is like the simplest stove there is. There's a, I call it like a throttle over here on this end. When it's wide open, that gives you maximum airflow. And I kind of consider this, if you know what logarithmic is, as when you close this up, it's logarithmically changing the amount of air flow that's in there. The most I've ever really clamp it down is right about that spot when I go to bed at night. So I'll load it up after I've got a rip roaring fire before I go to bed and uh, clamp it down about there and I get probably maybe seven hours and it depends on the temperature outside. Last night I went to bed and it was 50 degrees outside which really isn't that cold and I came out here and it was 75 degrees still in my main living area. Now this is a pretty good sized house. 2,500 square feet and so the ends of the house this is kind of the middle of the house right here the ends of the house will get about 68 degrees which isn't a big temperature differential but we kind of like it for sleeping anyways so let me pause this and let me show you the uh, the wood that I have outside all right so some of the things that I've done um, I built this woodshed about a year ago <laughs> And uh, my whole property sloped. If you watch some of my other videos, which I talk about that. 
And so this makes uh, challenges for building certain things. But uh, I came up with kind of something kind of creative where I used, you can see these cinder blocks on one end. And then the other end I just used, so on this side you can see, there's just a cat block. And I put concrete down, just like a bag of concrete, and I have the cat block sit on it, and then the same thing with the cinder blocks. Now the difference is with the cinder blocks, I actually fill that in with concrete, and before that I drive these uh, T-posts, they call them, and that gives me my support for my wood. And then I used uh, four by sixes, there's two per cinder block running across. But you have to put cinder blocks on one end to kind of bring it up level. And so that's that's my secret how I took care of for my sloped yard and then I had a bunch of rough sun rough sawn lumber uh, from when I cleared out my property to put my uh, driveway in and I had it milled and so then I used that for the sides and I just put you know four by fours into the ground and then I used uh, fence pickets um, around the outside so it looks good but because these uh, four by sixes are 12 feet long on the the two ends, and then it's uh, four feet wide, um, you and then four feet tall, that's a quarter and a half of wood for each section. This is only 10 foot. I think they were out of the, I must have run them out on the 12 foot, so I put 10 foot in the middle. So that would be a cord and a quarter. So there's three cords on each end and a cord and a quarter. So that's uh, four and a quarter cords in this uh, three sections. And then I've got a couple other sections down farther and some rounds that I haven't done. And I'm building a section all the way in the back. That's really for my cherry and my um, um, pecan that I'm going to use for cooking. Um, anyways, let me show you up here. Now, one of the things I do, because in the middle of the night, uh, 4 o'clock in the morning or something, I don't want to be going all the way out there, especially when it's 20 degrees. So I put a face cord up here on the front of the house. I should have done it from the sidewalk. But this is just one of those racks that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. Well, the dogs are coming out to visit. Um, and so I load that up. So that's convenient. And I have to do that about every two weeks. I, I've got one on the front porch, one on the back, and then I put some... Uh, smaller pieces that I use for kindling to kind of get things started so let's go back in the back all right so on my back porch I've got a little bit smaller rack it's just uh, one-third smaller but that's uh, all that would fit in this area and then again I have uh, some kindling and then I actually have some leftover lumber and things that I've uh, split into smaller pieces that I use uh, also um, Downstairs in my basement, I actually have a Vermont Castings uh, wood stove, but we really haven't actually had to use that yet. Um, that is uh, Defiant, which is a very large wood stove. It doesn't have a blower or anything, but that is supposed to probably heat this whole house as well. You know, I forgot to talk about it. I've got, um, this is a real small splitter I bought probably six, seven years ago. And uh, this is uh, maybe 10 ton, but that's what I use for splitting up some of my kindling. I'll uh, you know bust them into probably a quarter the size of the normal stuff that I use in the uh, fireplace. And I also have a kinetic log splitter. I'll do a video on that, but that thing really chews up wood. It takes about four people for us to run that. It's, it's amazing. So anyways, uh, this is a... Um, this is something that I like having right up here. Um, I'm kind of spoiled. Uh, one of the things I did when I bought this house, I bought an elevator. It's actually a freight elevator. And uh, so this brings it from the lower level up to the upper level. So I, I can load up one of those hand trucks that fold out and has, you know, four wheels down the ground. I can load it with my lumber, bring it up here, and put it on the back porch. But I can also, you know, split my kindling right here out of the rain, and it makes it nice. So... This is uh, something to think about. Everywhere I've put, um, I've put ramps too, so that if I have to maybe come from the garage to in here um, with, with lumber, we can do that. But you know, I've decided the elevator is a much better way to go. So this is something you need to think about to make things as easy as possible because the wood is just, 
kind of a pain. I can fill up both of these racks in about an hour. It doesn't take that long from my, you know, larger racks that are outside. All right, this is actually really simple. Um, all I did was took some of the uh, ad paper and uh, rolled it up in there and then I stuck, you see right here, this is one of the fat wood and then I just took some of that kindling that I got out there and this is all really dry thinner pieces of wood and this will light really easy so let's see if I can do this all one-handed here all right here we go so now I just light the paper a couple locations and it'll light the fat wood automatically the fat wood burns super easy Oh, and make sure you've got this open up all the way. This is the damper for the fireplace. And uh, you can see this is burning. The fat wood's already lit. So we're just going to close this up so we don't get any heat. Or, I'm sorry, any smoke into the house while this thing's getting started. And this won't take long at all. And then what I'll do is after this uh, kind of burns down a little bit, I'll go put some of the bigger pieces because this will give me a nice bed of coals. All right, let's pause this. Oh yeah, one of the things I forgot to mention, it's very important for you to get one of these. Uh, it's a magnetic thermometer. They call it a burn indicator. And this helps you identify you know whether you've got this thing running too cold or too hot or just right and so you can see the section right up here in the middle this is the burn zone you want to try to keep it within so uh, otherwise you could get a whole bunch of uh, creosote if you're too low or if you're too high you could cause you know premature failure of your whole system so anyways that's something to keep in mind um, normally you put this on your you know, like say I've got a wood stove in the basement, my uh, exhaust pipe is exposed there and you'd put it on that. But in this case, I don't really have any other access. So this just gives me a relative indicator and it works fine. So the other thing you're supposed to do is when you bring, you don't leave your ash pan in the house, as I mentioned earlier, you're supposed to take it outside and set it on concrete. And uh, sometimes if it's really bad weather, I'll set it over there in my uh, cook outdoor cooking area out of the rain but uh, we're not supposed to have any rain for the next several days in fact it's just finished raining for a day and a half so this will be a fine place for it uh, later on tonight when I'm pretty sure this is completely extinguished I'd let that burn all day and so there really weren't any hot coals I'll take it and dump it in my ash pile and put a little bit of water on it just to be sure all right so one of the things I wanted to show you it's 44 outside so it's a little chilly but not terrible and the bottom number there is 70 degrees inside. So I've let this uh, run down a little bit lower than I normally do. Now I actually have another thermometer. So this one has uh, four thermometers. This one down here is the room a little farther away and the current room where the fireplace is in. So you can see we're down to 68. Um, these are each ends of the house, the A and B. So you can see we're a little bit cooler and it's just because I've been busy today and kept the fire going. And then this is the basement area, which we have some supplemental heating. My grandkids are down there, so they've got electric heat, but uh, I run my fan on my AC, which tends to keep the whole house, you know, fairly uniform. So, but we haven't run heat in several months already. And uh, we've just been using the fireplace. So, because it's relatively warm outside, it's not in the 20s, I'll be able to get this house up to, uh, you know, actually this living room gets a little uncomfortable for me, but we'll keep the uh, extremities of the house at uh, like 68 degrees, which is again, comfortable for sleeping. There's Buddy photobombing again. Okay, so it hasn't been that long. It's just been uh, probably two minutes and you can see this is uh, uh, rip roaring already. The uh, temperature is uh, hasn't come up yet, but this stove is probably uh, 450, 500 pounds. I think it's probably in the 400 pound range, but anyways, you can see Buck stove down at the bottom. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this uh, 
heat up the stove and put it up in the center of the uh, burn zone on that thermometer and then I'm going to throttle this back to the first line. And then at that point, um, I'm going to come back and uh, put in some of the larger logs. Um, if I'd had a good bed of coals already, I would have just loaded up with, uh, you know, just a few of the um, kindling and then put the big logs right on top of it and everything would have caught and been just fine. But this is basically a cold start. In fact, the thermostat had kicked off, so that means the stove had got below even the temperature the thermostat thought it should run. In fact, let me make sure that thermos, the thing is on and you'll hear the thing kick in. Yeah, it's actually on. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this again. Why? All right, here is the uh, Vermont casting stove that I have in the basement. And uh, we actually put uh, rock on the uh, sides behind it. And then we also have a similar burn indicator on the stove pipe. And, uh, and then we also have one of these uh, fans that will run just based on heat, so it's an eco fan. But I have all of the same uh, um, pieces that I mentioned up above. I just need to get a hanger and hang those things up. Um, I got my little, little boy William down here, my grandson. He wanted to uh, help out. <laughs> so, so I just wanted to show you this. This is a huge fireplace. This holds 24-inch logs, and it's beautiful, too. So I bought this as a... Uh, a slightly used uh, unit, but it was in perfect shape, only been used for a year. Now downstairs I have another full face cord, which is one third of a cord. Unfortunately this is kind of like a storage area for some of my projects and everything, but I try to keep everything really close to where I'm uh, going to use my fireplace so you don't have to go very far. And I have a lot of kindling down here as well. There was one other accessory you should consider getting, and that's a fireplace rug. So. Uh, since I have carpeting in my living room right in front of my fireplace, I like to, uh, there's a photo bomb. <laughs> I like to get one of these uh, very fire resistant rugs to put in case um, while you're um, kind of cleaning out the fireplace, uh, sometimes there's some sparks that fly out and this uh, will give you some additional protection. All right, you can see that again, we're probably at about 10 minutes now and just that little bit of wood that I put in there. It is uh, approaching the, uh, the actual burn zone area. Now, what I'm going to do on this is uh, I'm going to take this wood that I have kind of crisscrossed. And, you know, once the fan kicks on, I'm probably going to, I'll turn off the fan, I'll open the door, and I'll arrange all of this wood to where they're pointing front to back instead of left and right. And this particular fireplace, that's the intent of, uh, for it to be able to burn properly since the air comes in the front and then goes straight through. And it also keeps it from rolling out, you know, when you open the door or rolling against the door when you have it arranged that way. So this is, uh, I think this can take up to 20 inch uh, pieces of wood, um, you know, front to back. Sometimes when I have some longer ones, I'll put them in diagonally once I get a good bed of coals just to use them up. Um, when you're out there cutting the pieces, you don't always get them exactly the right size. All right. So let me... Now, right after I paused this, the fan kicked on. And this is a variable speed fan. So when I've let the temperature of the house kind of go down, I, I do put the fan all the way at max speed. But uh, once I start getting this up into the comfort range, I will turn it back a little bit until I'm about ready to go to bed and then I'll open it wide up again. This is strictly a blower. It has nothing to do with the speed of the fan. That little lever down on the side is uh, what controls how hot you're going to have your fire. So um, I'm probably going to, like I said, let this burn up to where it gets to the middle range and then I'll add some wood at that time. You know, I should mention, uh, if you're going to buy a uh, wood stove, you ought to consider getting something that's a dual fuel, um, coal or wood. But in my area, we just have tons and tons and tons of wood. And I have uh, several rental properties, and so I have a lot of tree guys that I know, and they bring me rounds whenever I ask for them. And... Uh, 
they have to dispose of them and so they're willing to bring them over here no charge now i will buy some premium like i was able to get some cherry and some pecan i'll pay for that and i'll use that for smoking but everything else is free um, so something to think about with coal you do have to buy it there's unless you have a coal vein in your backyard you can grab it uh, wood is basically free except for your labor of you know splitting it and uh, hauling it up getting it in here but uh, I, I like it so for example right now uh, this is approaching 300 degrees heat that I have coming into the room um, that's a fantastic amount of heat and uh, oh yeah one more thing a unique design about your house you ought to consider is straight up above this fireplace there's a return air vent and I actually have one in several parts of the room here there's another one right there and this house has uh, cathedral ceilings and uh, so each one of the rooms will collect the heat that gathers up and I also you know keep a fan uh, turning to keep the air circulating and so this is uh, while I've got the fan on the HVAC running fan only it's distributing that heat very efficiently all throughout the house so that's something to think about all right this is really hot but uh, what I've done now is like I said I've rearranged the wood now where it's uh, front to back and let me go get some more wood to throw in here all right another thing you should have is some safety gear this is uh, welders gloves that I picked up that are you know probably uh, they go up past my wrist and then I also got a pretty good load of uh, wood here. Now I got some smaller ones. I'm going to put them towards the middle where the heat is. And that's going to help catch the rest of these on fire. I may or may not have enough wood here, but it's going to be close. All right, I've loaded this thing up now. You can see that I put the, put the smaller ones on there so those will catch pretty quickly. And I've got the larger ones surrounded. Now this will burn down to a really good set of coals. It's just about 6 o'clock in the evening. I won't have to do anything until about uh, 10 or 11 when I'm going to bed and I'll throw some bigger pieces like I have on top and I'll be good all night. So anyways, let's close this up. Turn my fan back on. Like I said, in about, uh, it took me about 15 minutes and I was already getting 300 degree uh, temperatures out. Now that I've added this extra fuel, and uh, this was primarily oak that I stuck in there. Um, I really, what I'll do is in the uh, comment section or in the description, I'll add the BTUs for each of the types of wood. Um, there are specific woods that give much higher amount of energy for longer periods of time. So for example, pine can give you a pretty high energy output, but it's for a very short duration. You know, where if you go to red oak that was one of the top ones that has extremely high BTUs over a long period of time and that's what you're looking for now um, I've got a mix of everything on this property and I burn everything but what I do is I mix it in primarily with the white and red oak so you don't get a big problem with creosote doing it this way all right I'm gonna pause this and actually you can see this is uh, this is catching very quickly and again you just got to start to where you get a you know pretty good burn on those first uh, probably eight pieces that I had small pieces and then when you stick these in you, you put about four more a little larger than what you had before and then those will catch and then I'll catch everything else on fire so what I'm doing now is I'm just waiting for this uh, temperature gauge to get up to mid-level and then I'm gonna throttle this back and then if it as it creeps up a little bit more then I start moving it into the more clamp down region. There's nothing like having a wood stove. It's actually very, very nice to look at. Now, one of the things that'll happen, you should be aware of this, is the um, front glass on this, when you throttle it all the way back for the evening, um, it will get, you know, pretty black. But in the morning when you, you know, pull out all the, uh, the ash, just leave you know the remaining coals and then restart the thing um, it will completely burn all of that uh, soot off of the glass and that's just an indicator of what you know is happening inside your pipe so you need to you know run this thing up to kind of clean out the creosote and 
make sure you do your maintenance on your fireplace. So get your uh, pipes cleaned out if you have the ability to do that. I've got someone I hired to get up there get us a big tall roof. Um, safety first, you don't want a fire in your, uh, in your stack. All right, let's give it a few more minutes and let this get up the temperature. All right, so why did I put a wood stove in the basement? Um, I'm constantly thinking about uh, redundancies and uh, the Vermont casting stove is uh, kind of like planning for the 1800s. If we lose power and everything, that does not have it a fan and heating at the lowest level will heat the floors above and, uh, and you know, if we had to, we could live down in the basement, no problem, and that would give more than enough heat. And uh, But also keep our pipes from freezing, and it's just a real simple, low-tech way. So redundancy is something you constantly need to think about. I try to do, you know, multiple ways of getting the same result. So redundancy just means you got more than one way to get things done. Anyways, the fire is really rip-roaring over here. Let's take a look. Okay, what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring this to the first line now. And that'll kind of slow the progression of that uh, so it doesn't overheat on me. You cannot leave a fire like this alone initially. Um, like I said, if you left that thing wide open with the amount of wood I got in there, it could run away on you and uh, damage your stove. And I'd hate to think it could actually burn down your house. So the first uh, half hour or so, till you get this thing throttled back, you have to you have to watch this. You can see how it's uh, already slowed down the burn rate on this because we've reduced the amount of oxygen going inside there. And it's, it's actually really cool when you first do this kind of dances, but there's there's more than enough airflow and this thing will still burn like crazy and it will move to, you know, over temp, excuse me, if, uh, if I don't throttle it back again in a little bit, but this just gives me a little more leeway for control. Um, there is another thing. I think this is actually for making uh, like Chinese noodles But I bought this because this is actually a really cool thing when you're uh, Scraping out the fireplace. There's actually quite a bit of holes that uh, Might get dumped into your ash pan and I'll just use this as a sifter to pull out those coals and throw them back in to make it easier to start the fire I always try to just make it as easy as possible to uh, to start it so I don't have to go through using any of the fat wood or paper or anything. This, if, There's many times we're running weeks on end without this thing ever shutting down. You know, I forgot to mention these up here. Um, using a wood fire, it, it actually really dries out the house quite a bit. And there's these cast iron pieces that you can buy. Because this one sits back in the fireplace, we couldn't use the larger ones, so I got these smaller ones. You'll even see half pieces to fit in here but you just got to come in here and fill these up every couple days and these will evaporate water into the air keep it uh, you know the house humidified for you automatically but you can see this has not been that difficult I made a little bit of a mess here so I'll use my little sweeper to kind of sweep things up and uh, get it back looking nice again for the wifey Okay, we're in right in the middle of the burn zone, so I tamped it down just a little bit more, and I'm going to keep an eye on this for just a little bit longer, but this thing is now putting out over 400 degrees Fahrenheit uh, temperature into the room, and it's uh, kind of uncomfortable for me to be that close, but this is a very large room, and so it's spreading the heat out, and uh, it's going straight up also and circulating throughout the whole house. So it'll take probably it'll take probably an hour or so for us to start seeing. I don't remember what we started at on the temperature here. You can see we're uh, 71 degrees down. Uh, we're about uh, halfway across the room, and then this other one is uh, 69. But you know, within an hour or so, this will be up to about 73, and I'll be down into shorts and a t-shirt because. Uh, once it gets starting above that, I'm, uh, it's a little too uncomfortable for me. But uh, again, you're trying to heat up the house 
for the colder night. It's going to be like about 36 tonight, which is not terrible. I know the rest of you guys throughout the country are probably thinking, geez, that's a warm spell. But, you know, I'm actually from Florida and I'm living in uh, North Georgia now. And uh, it's going to take a while for my blood to get used to this. But uh, we're also trying to keep the rest of the house with grandkids and everything as comfortable for them. All right, well, I hope, uh, hope this was enjoyable for you. I will go find that information right now and put it into the description about the uh, different woods that you should use. But uh, like I said, I use about 75% of uh, oak, hickory, uh, white and red oak and hickory. And then the rest is a mix of what I had, you know, on the property here. And uh, it's actually, you know, been working real well. Get very long burns. I'll do another video about uh, when I split in season uh, to explain how I've actually got years worth of wood on my property right now that uh, I'll just be replacing what I have in my sections up here and uh, I'll, I'll be good to go for a long time. All right, well, I hope this was enjoyable. You know, hit, hit the like button if you liked it and uh, and we will uh, we'll do some more videos. Uh, this is a little bit out of sequence. I wanted to do the uh, food, um, water food shelter, uh, I forget the list right now. Uh, I wanted to do it in that order, but when it's cold, I had an opportunity here to kind of show you what a wood stove does. And I think this is a really important thing to not worry, rely on electricity. Um, I actually have an idea for my blower up here where I'm gonna hook up a battery pack with an inverter and uh, I'll be able to you know, run this thing in the event of power outage. But I do have solar and I do have uh, uh, capabilities of, uh, with my inverter for secure power supply. We'll go through that as well. Again, I got multiple redundancies throughout this whole thing. Okay, well, that's enough. I hope uh, you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll be talking to you later.